don't get me wrong, I love my Amiga. It has all the big simmy games I could want, some nice little adventures, the golden chance to manage my own line of bathroom facilities or whatever, you know it's the best. My favourite computer of all time, <laughs> without question. But sometimes, yeah, getting some proper action on it can be tricky. It definitely had moments, some fine shoot 'em ups, good platformers and the like, but the lack of buttons meant that sometimes the whole shebang kinda shat the bed when it tried to do anything really complex. So you ended up with famous games that have lots of pizzazz but are kind of empty like Shadow of the Beast or Xenon, or well, you know, the Amiga port of Ninja Gaiden 2. We might look at that game properly in another vid, <laughs> that'd be fun. A lot of action games, platformers and the like just weren't satisfying is my point. But then one series changed all of that, or at least it was just so far ahead to the point that it was hardly worth playing any other action game. In 1991, a group of Germans under the banner of Factor 5 released the first Turrican game and showed what could actually be done on the system if you really put the muscle in. These games, well, they're up there with any action game from the 16-bit era, no doubt about it, and they're amongst the most famous and influential European games ever released, ever. Now I've always been awful at them, but I've gone ahead and got damn good at the games just so I could bring them to you here, so don't even think of accusing me of using trainers, because the amount of lives you see on that screen, well that's just a signifier of how good you're not at this game compared to me, okay? Anyway, let's roll. Now, of course, the original Turrican was actually a C64 game from 1990, one of the last major games from the machine, a title that made similar efforts on the specky look, well, kinda naff by comparison. It was the brainchild of this intense-looking, somewhat scruffy, mulleted German dude. Now, don't let the appearance fool you, for this is Manfred Trenz. He may look like he's just escaped from a cow's digestive system, but the man is a genius, and possibly the greatest programmer of the whole 8-bit era. Cause why, this man basically designed and programmed Turrican by himself. We are not worthy. Anyway, Turrican was huge, but the Amiga, Commodore's highly acclaimed second album, was also gaining traction at the time, and so the game was ported and updated for the machine in 1991, with a few more people added to the turmoil. Not a bad thing considering one of them just so happens to be Chris Halsbeck, one of the greatest composers of tunage in video game history. His job was to add music to the Amiga game in the places that there wasn't any in the C64 game, that being most of them, and yeah, we'll see how he fed. I'm not spoiled to say that it was pretty well. And you know, a couple of other people were brought in to add appropriate stank to the graphics and gameplay, presumably while Manfred Trenz was stomping around with a whip and shouting words of threatening encouragement, like some crazy Jordan Belfort from the swamplands of the Teutoburg Forest. The end result is a game that is still legendary. Huge, sprawling stages, tons of weapons and tons of forms, things you thought you'd never see in an Amiga game and so easy to do. You've got the controllable death ray, the almighty power lines, the energy wheels, spray guns, all there to play with all the goddamn time. Toriken is virtually unique amongst Amiga action games, whereas so many of them really do show their age now, Toriken has not lost a single step. It's as fluid and as smooth as it was back in 91. The controls were always there because they're so freaking simple. There's so much fun in it just exploring the stages and finding secret after secret. Heavily inspired by Metroid of course, but a brilliant touch. Even the graphics are still good. It might not be an artsy Shadow of the Beast type thing, but there's effective parallax, neat atmosphere and some very, very cool bosses. And the Turrican sprite himself is a very important pendejo amongst the large cast of video game mechabots out there. And then, well, you've got the music, haven't you? Just the title sequence alone is enough to get the blood pumping. And you know, then you've got basically every single stage theme after that. It's no biggie, really. It'll only get better as we go along. And of course, there's serious challenge. You do have to be somewhat careful with Turrican, especially seeing as there's no knockback or invincibility periods. That energy bar can sink like a frickin' stone, and one mistake could result in instant death. But once you get used to this, you'll be fine. You'll be ready to explore stages methodically with due care and precision, beating enemies every step of the way. Probably. And you've also got the scrolling stages here and there to mix things up a bit, so there's not much chance of the game outstaying its welcome either. 
In the end, the game is superb, so far ahead of the pack. As far as the Amiga goes, the only competition Toriken has is the other games in the series. That's it. It's bloody brilliant. Of course, Toriken's popularity did result in a bunch of other conversions, most of which, to be honest, aren't too bad. The game saw action on the Mega Drive, for example. Not quite as good as the computer versions, but still fine if you want a little fix. And much the same applies to the PC Engine version, although it is missing a little bit of stuff. The Game Boy even got a Turrican port, and considering how limited that system was, it's really not that bad at all. Even the Spectrum had a version of Turrican, and it was… fine. I mean, you wouldn't want to show it to your C64 owning friends because you'd just get mocked, but still, good for the Spectrum. In any case though, all eyes would be on the sequel, because it would be two things. Big fat proof that the Amiga could do brain-splitting eye-twisted action as good as anybody on the consoles, and one final spectacular flourish for the aging C64. It would be everything the first game was but bigger, badder and better. It would be Turrican 2 The Final Fight, released in 1991, with Manfred Trends once again at the helm of… well, basically everything really. Turrican 2 The Final Fight's critical reputation is kinda standard. It's often cited as the greatest action game on the Amiga, perhaps one of the best on computers in general. But that's not worth caring about, because what you really want to know is what someone who has always been rubbish at the series thinks, don't you? Well don't fret, because that's coming up right now. And yeah, game's awesome. It's not exactly a massive step forward, but it's certainly a subtle evolution. There's some useful new tweaks, such as being able to switch to the energy wheel whenever you damn well please, very fun, as well as new and cool weapons like the bounce shot. But in the end, it's just more fantastic token action. There's still so much to find in the stages, they're so big now that time will almost certainly be a factor as you just lose yourself hunting for one-ups and gems and what have you. There's yet more fantastic music and fantastic graphics. Indeed, the soundtrack for Turrican 2 is one of the best you'll find on the Amiga. You can just tell from the big title theme, complete with proper intro and story and all that good stuff, this game's going to be something very special. Oh, and yeah, <laughs> it's a vicious challenge. Particularly when you get to the later stages, you are going to have to be more methodical than ever in order to survive some of this shit. Or you could just use a trainer. Anyway, the game even features a proper side-scrolling shoot-em-up stage, and it's bloody brilliant to boot. But then, Manfred Trends was pretty good at shmups too, so hardly a surprise. The game is an absolute belter. It'll take a long time to master, and I'm far too shit to actually play it without cheating my balls off, but every bit of it is worth it. It's one of the best action games you'll find on a computer, and the definite high point of the whole series. And just like the first game, in the words of Aaliyah, age ain't nothing but a number. It'll never stop being as good as it was the first day it was released. Absolutely amazing, fantastic, classic game. Now the other versions of Turrican 2 are where things get a little bit weird. First off, a word about the C64 version, because that's kinda great too. Turrican 2 takes the C64 to its absolute limit, there is not a better looking game on the whole system, and it pretty much comes through intact. It's Turrican 2 all the way, and just as worthy as the Amiga version. When you get to the console ports though, something odd happened. The Code Monkeys, responsible for all of the original game's console ports, had every intention of porting Turrican 2 to the Mega Drive and SNES. But then publishers Accolade snags the rights to Universal Soldier, you know, that film with Jean-Claude Van Dimme and Dolph Lundgren. And so Accolade decided in their infinite we are so shite wisdom to morph Turrican 2 into a licensed game. The result is kind of odd. Our robotic hero is now an even more robotic Belgian actor, and rather than massive machines and the like, you tend to just fight massive versions of Dolph Lundgren instead. The shoot-em-up levels were cut out totally, and a few all-new levels replaced them, and they were kinda crap. Aside from that though, the game is still mostly Turrican 2 with a few new sprites. And so yeah, it's not a terrible game or anything, but it is more like a curio and hardly a worthy port of such a great game. Also worthy of note is Super Turrican for the NES, the only appearance of the series on the 8-bit machine. This game is kind of like a compilation, with levels from Turrican 1 and 2, and it's also notable because absolutely everything, and I do mean everything, was done by Manfred Trenz, even rearranging the music. It's a bloody hard game, particularly seeing as it has no checkpoints. 
points, which is kind of major seeing as every other turret in game restarts you exactly where you die, but it's definitely a worthy action title for the system. The unfortunate upshot of all this though is that sadly there was no proper console version of Turrican 2, and considering some of the utter cack from the Amiga that did get ported over to consoles, it's a crying shame that the best action title in the system's history never got a proper shot. Also, Super Turrican on the NES would be Manfred Trenzer's final involvement in the series. An 8-bit programmer at heart, he decided to give his baby up to other people. But that didn't mean the end, because there would be a third Turrican game, with the Mega Drive being the main focus as far as platforms go. Still, there was a sort of weirdness again here. First there was going to be an Amiga version, then there wasn't because the system was starting to flag commercially, and so Factor 5 worked on the Mega Drive game. Then another team called Kaiko got involved with producing a Turrican 3 game for the Amiga, ultimately giving Factor 5 the white arse when they found out. Eventually this Kaiko team broke apart, and an agreement was reached to port the Mega Drive Turrican over to the Amiga. And weirdly, despite all of this total palaver, the Amiga port of Turrican 3 was the first to hit the shelves, under the name Turrican 3 Payment Day, with the Mega Drive version, known as Mega Turrican, following not long after. And both games are kind of the same really. The Amiga version has better music, the MD version has better graphics, but neither the MD's music or the Amiga's graphics are particularly bad or anything. It's all kind of much of a muchness really, so for the sake of consistency I'm just going to concentrate on the Amiga version. To be honest, Turrican 3 is the weakest game out of the core 3, but it's still very good all the same. The reason why it's not as good is a simple one. With Manfred Trenzgon, the game does go in a different direction. The expansive maze-like stages full of secrets aren't really here and the levels are as such a little bit more straightforward. If you go all around the shop trying to look for secrets, you might end up getting a little bored here. The more closed in feel of the game is a teensy weensy bit disappointing for anyone who would have wanted to see the big scope of Turrican expanded further, because the game always had a bit more to offer than just blasting. However, that doesn't mean Turrican 3 isn't very, very good at what it does. While still a challenge, it's perhaps not quite as unforgiving as the previous games were. It's certainly a little bit easier to judge where shit's going to attack you from. You also get a grappling hook to play with now for some Bionic Commando style shenanigans, and most everything else is business as usual, and it's still kind of a total joy. It also features some of the best music you'll ever hear in a game, from the classic first stage theme onwards. So while the game may have had kind of a messy development, it's still very good indeed, still a superb Turrican game. It's one last bow for the series on the Amiga with another triumph, and on the Mega Drive it's certainly one of the better side-scrolling action games you'll find, if it's not exactly on the same level as the likes of Gunstar Heroes or Contra Hardcore, then it's definitely in the next best league, and well worth a pick up. And with that there isn't a great deal left, but you might be wondering where the Super Nintendo was in all of this, mightn't you? Well don't fret, two Turrican games came out on the ugly grey little fin, don't you know? And the first one is Super Turrican, coming out around the same time as Mega Turrican and all of that shit. It's a different game, although like the NES game of the same name, it's another sort of Mega Mix deal that mostly consists of stages from 1 and 2, plus a couple of stages from 3 at the end. Not bad at all if you're a fan of the series, although sadly the game was a little bit rushed and not quite as spectacular as it should have been. We had seen it already on the NES. Still, it's stages from Turrican 1 and 2, so the game's hardly bad now. And finally, there's the last Turrican game to date, Super Turrican 2, released in 1995. This is more of an original effort. So what do you get here? Well, you get pretty much every major power up in the series for one, from Freeze Grappling Hook to the Almighty Energy Wheel, and you also get all the flashiness you would expect from a late period SNES title such as this one. This might just be the most graphically impressive of all the Turrican games, in fact. As a game, it's pretty similar to the Turrican 3 mold, only even more so. It's very linear, and you might not want to see that in a Turrican game. But it's still great fun all the same, even if it's not entirely faithful to the screed set by Manfred Trenz all those years ago. And with that, Turrican turned all gyroscopic and spun off into the night. There's not much else aside from a couple of mobile conversions. The last gasp of the robot came around 1999, when THQ acquired the rights to the series. There were plans to make a 3D Turrican game with Manfred Trenz himself at the helm. 
but alas not much came of it. The project was binned and trends flew off in a huff, accusing his partners of not quite having the required vision or motivation for the series. And well, yeah, THQ. Can't really blame him, can ya? Toriken has laid dormant ever since and the almighty Factor 5 sadly timed out in 2009. And as for Trends himself, well, he has a new company and the rights to the series, snatching them up as soon as THQ stopped renewing them. Trends isn't exactly the most talkative of people, so there's not been any word whatsoever about any sort of new Toriken game, but no doubt people will still speculate that surely there'll be some sort of announcement at some point, seeing as how he can legally make the games and whatnot. And you know, as much as you do get a lot of failed Kickstarters for creaky old computer titles, Turrican is probably one of the few names out there that would really get some steam behind it. It'd still be an utterly relevant game, and perfect for a modern overhaul. It would even be neat if it happened to be a Metroidvania. I mean, I know that you see some old games dredged up for disappointing sequels that have absolutely no business whatsoever being Metroidvanias or anything like that, but hey, this is one that could easily fit into that category, no problemo. Of course, this is all nothing but conjecture, but hey, there's always a chance that Bren Maguire and his high-powered techno suit will fly into action once again. In closing, Toriken is perhaps one of the strongest series of games that I've done a full retrospective like this on. If you look at everything we've covered, is any of it bad? Even the conversions of the games on the weakest system you can find are still solid for what they are. Even Universal Soldier, botched together licensed game that it may be, still carries some of the spirit of the second classic game. Even the departure of Manfred Frickin' Trends, the guy who created the whole shebang and did several of the games in the series virtually on his lonesome, didn't stop the third game from being damn good. And then at last it departed while still in the pink of condition. There's no lengthy decline, no embarrassing revival, no general fuck up. The reputation of the series has stayed utterly pristine through all these years, and every single Turrican game is absolutely worth playing. And yet I would still bloody love to see the game make a comeback. It might be a risk, some may not even want to entertain the possibility of that glorious reputation being sullied, but have faith. After all, a big man would still be behind it, and who would be better to create a new Toriken game than he of the glorious mullet and his Prussian pals? I'm sure, exactly like me, all you people want is another Toriken game that you can just boot up, bask in the glory of, and die in again and again and again. The only thing I will say is, Manfred, um, if you do decide to make a new Toriken game, um, pretty please could you include a trainer? because I'd like to be able to get past the first stage if at all possible. <laughs> Thanks. And with that said, it's time to end the video. Thanks for watching, and wherever you are, whoever you be, have a good one, take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.